finding problems that's easy. They exist in every community. I'm Terry Springs, your host. We're looking deeper, and we are talking solutions, finding out how we all can make a difference. The other day, we were talking about Now Clinic e-visits changes when it comes to our medical appointments. Today, we've asked in Dr. Papa George, and we're going to talk about shared medical appointments. Welcome to Talking Solutions. We're glad you're here. Thank you. What is a shared medical appointment? A shared medical appointment is a concept that's been around for a while. It started in other parts of the country. It's a group of patients that will all sit together and discuss with their physician the different issues that they'll bring to a regular appointment. Ideally, we like to keep our appointments a certain size. We've found from the data and the models that we follow, appointments need to be about a certain time because nobody wants to be in the doctor's office for hours and hours. We also want a time frame where everyone feels that they've gotten the information that they need to learn and also take care of what their particular needs are for their visit. Well, being that there are so many more people, fortunately, who have medical Mm -hmm. Coverage these days Mm -hmm. with the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. There are more people in the medical system Mm -hmm. looking for some kind of service from Mm -hmm. their doctors. Mm -hmm. So you've got more people that you're dealing with. Does the idea of a shared medical appointment also Mm -hmm. help to deal with those large numbers? Mm -hmm. There are many ways that we deal with the larger population of people that are seeking care. This is one avenue, as you mentioned before, the different avenues of the e-visits, the NOW Clinic. All of these are are different things that as we look in the future, how to serve our population and how to meet the needs of all our patients. Technology is a big one, but there is also that human contact that we need. What we've also found in one of the big aspects of these types of visits is that you put people together, not that only have a single medical condition or that all have the same medical condition, but it's that you bring people together so that they have human contact with their provider, but that they also learn from each other. What we found is that when you do this, there is a benefit of the support because there is a group of 10 to 15 people. About 13 is the average number that you're looking at. These people all come in with various issues, various experiences, and the goal is for us to see them, to talk to them, to take care of their needs, but then also to hear from each other because that way you put that group together, they learn. So if you had people in the same shared medical appointment Mm -hmm. who had a similar medical condition that they were dealing with. Mm -hmm. So if I was in a shared medical appointment with other people who also shared that medical condition, Mm -hmm. we'd all ask questions where they'd go, oh, I have that happening to me too. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, very much so. And what we found is that if you put people together that actually have the varied conditions, there is definitely an overlap. There are questions that are generated or information that's brought on that the patient themselves may not have thought to ask. So if you look across the board as far as is this a quote unquote good way of taking care of patients, we found that statistically there is more reporting of potential side effects of medications. There is better compliance of, say, medications medications or treatment plans, and there's also better health maintenance done with these appointments because somebody will remember, oh, wait a minute, that's happened to me, or oh, I have this problem too. This other person that they're listening to, okay, that's how they deal with it. What we also find is that that support of other people have medical conditions in general. doesn't matter as much of what it is per se all the time, but that other medical conditions can coexist and that people are living with them and dealing with them and moving forward and surviving them. I think that's a very important part. There are many times that we all feel maybe isolated in whatever we have, that I am the only one that may have this or that other people do not share that. We also find that if you put multiple age groups together and men and women together, that also is really an educational part of it that makes a big difference. So segregating people to, okay, everybody that has only one condition will see you together has some help, but not as much of that comprehensive. A good example also that we find is when we see people, you know, we'll see them for their regular issues that they have, but then also, oh, and by the way, I see you haven't had your mammogram done, so let's get that ordered for you, or I've seen you don't have your colonoscopy set up. So it kind of becomes almost a little theme with each of the visits. Last week seemed to be colonoscopy week. We had multiple patients 
applications that were due for them or were kind of putting them off. By the last person that we had talked to about it, they already had their paper in hand. (laughs) They already had the encouragement from the people, well, encouragement and peer pressure, which works very nicely for the people to say, hey, you should get it done. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's not the best experience, but it's not terrible. And they were ready. So we affected quite a bit by doing something like this. And as a country, our goal is also to improve health maintenance as well as the conditions that everybody has. So along with the Affordable Care Act, offering people the access to appointments and to care, also we need to make sure we get that done. So it's a positive. Preventative is so important and Mm -hmm. it's so much better and so much less expensive in the long run. Mm -hmm. If we can keep you from coming up with this bad Mm -hmm. condition, Mm -hmm. so much better. And if you have the bad condition, you come in and we see you, you have the contact and you also can potentially learn about your condition, about other conditions. One of the things why the program was initially developed, it was initially developed by a psychologist who himself had experience with group visits of, you know, the support groups and that he ran. He himself experienced the medical experience of needing to go to multiple doctors, needing to have questions answered. And one thing he came up with was, how would I like this to be? What would my perfect appointment be? One of the things was, I would like to not feel rushed. We all feel rushed when we go in to see the doctor, myself included. You have a certain amount of time. You have to make sure you get all your questions in. You always will forget something. You'll forget what also is being told to you. Statistically, 50% of what we hear in the visit, we forget. There's a lot going on there. There's a lot going on. And what he felt was, well, what would be an ideal time? About 90 minutes. It's not too long of a time frame that they'll get tired of sitting. Their attention span and fatigue is not there. What he also said was, I would like my doctor to not be rushed. So why not put everybody in a setting where the doctor's moving around, but they're not moving in and out? You have that time with them. And the other aspect is, ideally, how quickly would I want to see somebody for whatever is going on? One week, two weeks, maybe not the, well, you're waiting for three months, which is actually almost a norm across the valley and across the country. Our goal is to reach as many people as we can. Dr. Papa George is with us with Southwest Medical Associates. We're talking about shared medical appointments. I know that if I'm going to have 13 people and myself in this shared medical appointment, certainly we're not in a little exam room. That's not going to happen. I need a little more room than that to function. <laughs> we use a conference room and we have everybody sitting in a semicircle. It provides a more comfortable environment so that everybody is facing each other and there's an interaction. Vital signs in that are taken beforehand. We have a staff of people. We have a clinical facilitator that is the person that runs the visit, meaning we'll list everybody and put people in a certain order of what's going on and what needs to be done. Everybody will have an exam done. It's usually more of that kind of a superficial exam of you listen to heart and lungs. If there's something that's very obvious, I have a spot I need to look at, or sometimes you may need to use a little liquid nitrogen to freeze a sunspot or look. That's something that we do. So it's very conservative. If there is a potential that there is something that may possibly come up that needs more privacy, which occasionally it does, we have a separate area that we will examine the person. We need to look at, say, maybe a hernia or there's a spot somewhere on the skin that's not as visible. We take care of that. And also, if we feel that particular setting would need a follow-up, the option of an individual appointment is always there. We also will judge if that's needed or not. So not to worry about the put the gown on with the opening in the back? Nope. And there's no group pap smears. (laughs) (laughs) That has come up before. And when we talked about the colonoscopies, we also talked about we are not doing group colonoscopies. No stirrups in there. No stirrups in there with everybody in a semicircle. Just wanted to check just to be sure we're talking about shared medical appointments because the landscape of medicine and medical appointments is Mm -hmm. changing so dramatically these Mm -hmm. days. How do you get involved in a shared medical appointment? Maybe I say, well, you know, I wouldn't mind just getting a checkup and Mm -hmm. talking about some general issues with some Mm -hmm. other patients. Mm -hmm. How do you set up one of these groups? Our main scheduling department that makes all our appointments, they've actually all been trained in detail in regards to being able to offer this type of appointment and being able to assist our patients to schedule this appointment. We've been doing this for a little over a year, and three of us, Dr. Johnson, myself, and Dr. Karamanides, were the original people that started this. So 
our scheduling department offered this to our own patients or somebody that was looking potentially when they scheduled with us. It is now offered in almost all our clinics. So when you call, you can ask for the appointment. And if the appointment comes up, the scheduler will say, we have an availability with such and such provider. This is a shared medical appointment. And they have a specific script that they follow to make sure that they convey the appropriate information and also make sure that the patient is appropriate for this. Anybody can be seen in one of these visits. Certain things that will exclude somebody would be not being fluent in English and needing a translator. That requires an individual appointment for clarification and Mm -hmm. to make sure that the person understood everything. Somebody that is uh, very debilitated and demented that has a caretaker coming with them, usually an individual appointment is more appropriate than a group setting, mainly for information purposes and the benefit of the patient. Everybody else pretty much is available for this and you call up and you ask, I would like to participate in this. When you come in before your appointment, we actually will call, my particular clinic calls each of the people to touch base with them first and also reiterate that this is a shared appointment. We gather some of the information by phone, the usual information of what is needed exactly if somebody has information that needs to be filled out at their visit and all of that. So that is a second touch base with the patient. And then when they come in, they check in in our clinic, do their regular check-in process and are escorted into to our group. You know, every time you go to a doctor's appointment of any mm-hmm. kind, they got to get your blood pressure. They yep. need to do what we call the vitals. They yep. need to get your weight, your mm-hmm. height, and all of that. Yep. Is that something that happens before they go into the shared room? or? Yes, and actually we have a system. We have a few medical assistants and nurses that are with us as a team, and we all work as a team to get everybody checked in, have their vital signs updated, make sure that everything is there. Another positive that we find is with these appointments during flu season, we We have flu shots available, so everybody and anybody that is, you know, needing a flu shot or needs updated pneumonia shot in that also is able to get that done during that time. So we really try to coordinate as much of that as we can. And then we go through, like I said, with our facilitator who directs the conversation so that everybody has their time to speak and also to share. Dr. Papa George from Southwest Medical Associates is with us today. We're talking about some of the things that really have changed as far as your medical appointments and your medical treatment. Talking today about shared appointments, the thing that you mentioned, Dr. Papa George, about how the schedulers are actually part of this, Mm -hmm. I do know, I think most people, when you need to see a doctor and you call the doctor's office, you're going to say, I need to see my doctor because yada, 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 whatever it is. So the schedulers are already trained, they know Mm -hmm. what the options are, and they say it sounds like Mm -hmm. your condition is something that would be perfect for a shared medical appointment. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried that? And they Mm -hmm. are able to explain what it is. Yep, and they've been a vital part of the success of our program because having the appointments available is one thing, but then making them public and available for our patients to utilize them is a big part of it. And it's always an ongoing process of learning and training and adjusting, but they have been a vital part of getting this out there and making it available for all our patients to utilize. One of the things you talked about was the success of the program. I've heard in the past that Southwest Medical Associates, like I'm sure a lot of other medical providers, are very interested to know after the fact, after the experience, Mm -hmm. what did that patient think Mm -hmm. of that contact. Mm -hmm. What have you found as far as the success of the Mm -hmm. shared medical appointments? Do people like them after they've done them? Yes. For the most part, we do have a very strong success. The patients did like the appointment, learned from the appointment. We always have learning opportunities and we do really appreciate our patients' input because that also makes it a very important way to improve. Being a patient and part of it and, and suggesting things or saying, hey, you know, you maybe be able to do this better, or I like this, really, it's helped us evolve over the last year. Our patients are asked to have feedback at every one of their appointments, even if they've come in a different time. And one of the things we do is we find, well, what other times would be a good time for you to come in? So that if when we expand our appointments, which I have recently expanded my appointment availability to see what would be the best utilized time coming from our patients and not us guessing, well, we think this would be good. Also, the setup of the 
room? Was it clear information when they tried to schedule the appointment? Very quickly, we find if there are things coming up that we need to clarify or fine tune. We also take very seriously the privacy issue of each of these appointments. Since there are multiple people in the group, each and every one of our appointments with each and every one of our patients, they sign a confidentiality agreement that educational information that is general may be shared with others. However, any private medical information is not to be shared outside of the group visit setting. And this is something that we take very seriously. We make sure that every single patient fills this out and signs it before the visit. We check during the visit. Before we close our visit, we make sure everybody has signed this. And also if family members attend this, which we try to have, if they would like to come in, maybe one or two members that can accompany their family. As far as learning themselves, we also have them sign an agreement that they also are participating in the confidentiality aspect of it. Medical privacy is such a big deal. Mm -hmm. Is it HIPAA that they say is Mm -hmm. the Patient Protection Act? Yes. And so there are Mm -hmm. confidentiality issues Mm -hmm. that are already part of Mm -hmm. the medical process. And we have a closed room, meaning that when our visit starts, our room that we use is closed. The only person that would maybe go in or come out would be the staff that would assist somebody to get something. So we really try to keep each of our facilities closed so that it is private. And what you're finding is that people are actually retaining more of the information that's shared? They are because things are repeated throughout the visit, so there's a lot more retention. The feedback we get is that the patients definitely don't feel as rushed. So the learning is one of the biggest things. The availability of the appointment is also something that they do like because the answer is not, we'll see you in two months. The answer is, we'll see you much sooner than that. They like the continuity fact that it is patients that, especially for my Myself, it's patients that know me that I've seen that have the option of seeing me and not seeing one of my extenders or one of the other partners, which they have the option to do. But across the board, they like the fact that they can sit down and they can see their doctor in person. Availability as busy as everybody is with appointments mm-hmm. and with, as we talked about a little bit earlier, the additional people who have medical coverage now. But the fact mm-hmm. is, is that the state of Nevada has always had an issue. We've got a really high ratio of doctor to patient. Mm -hmm. You have to serve a lot of different patients. Mm -hmm. So this helps with that whole effort to make sure everybody gets the medical that they desire. Yes, and that they get the appropriate amount of this and that they do get their time and that they get everything that is needed for them. You know, seeing somebody for five minutes and not getting their needs done and having to see them multiple times individually is not as helpful as once and done. So shared medical appointments, you said that Southwest Medical Associates, SMA, has been doing this for a year or two now. It's been about a year. Now that you've been doing it for a little while, Mm -hmm. what's the consensus? What's the overall feeling? Do you say this is really successful? This is good. Patients and doctors both don't feel as rushed. The information's really getting through. We're doing better service and people are happy with it. Do you see this expanding? I believe yes. We have found that it is very successful. Initially, like I said, there was the core of three of us. And then within the next few months, by the end of the year, we will have a shared medical visit available with at least one provider in each of our clinic locations so that other patients within Southwest Medical can have that access. And we found that because it had been a strong positive response that the availability to have this is imperative. And we're looking at expanding into our specialties. For example, right now, after we had started within primary care, our gastroenterology department is doing specific group visits for their colonoscopies. Not the colonoscopy <laughs> itself, because you know we I discussed was that. Ask. Yes, but for the visit that you need to do before, for the preparation, and this is only for the routine ones where there's nothing going on, but they need to see everybody to teach them about what's going to happen, what the follow-up will be after, and get everybody set up. So they have started in the last couple of months offering this so that they may be able to serve our patients that are waiting to get in for a health maintenance. That's interesting, though, to think about it as being an opportunity to do a good group informational session Mm -hmm. and say, everybody here is going to go through a colonoscopy in the very Mm -hmm. near future. We want you to know what exactly is involved. Yep. 
And this is something that that's required of every routine colonoscopy, regardless that the doctors and providers are now seeing the patients individually. It's almost a natural progression. We should offer something like this. Hopefully, we'll have other offerings with other specialties. But like I said, adult medicine right now is definitely the main one. And with gastroenterology, helping to accommodate our patients for their routine screening colonoscopies. Dr. Papa George, how often do you end up actually overseeing a shared medical appointment? Mm -hmm. I currently now have two of them. And at the end of the month, I'm going to be offering another one. So I have three sessions a week. And the rest of the time, I have my regular appointments that I see my patients. So I will be having a morning session, an afternoon session for Thursdays. And then for Friday afternoons, I have an additional session. During a shared medical appointment, Mm -hmm. what do you find are the most common shared medical conditions Mm -hmm. that you are treating and working with? Interestingly enough, as a primary care doctor, there's kind of a core of things that statistically we usually will see across the board. What I have found is we'll see these core things. Of course, we have our diabetics and we have people that have blood pressure and heart disease and cholesterol and acute things like back pain or bladder infection. So we have a wide range of those that we kind of have that core that we see. What I've found is that each group sees it seems to have a theme. So this last time it was we needed everybody updated with their colonoscopy. Other times we have people that their arthritis is acting up, so we'll have multiple people with similar issues. There's other times that we'll have people that will have the sleep issue, which is another common one. So it just kind of tends to change depending on the group, but fluidity is what's important that it can be anything we need it to be for that particular group of people. So for people who are listening to us today on Talking Solutions, and our guest today is Dr. Papa George from SMA talking about shared medical appointments. If somebody is covered by SMA, and we know lots of people in the state of Nevada, very, very big medical provider, if they're calling looking for an appointment, they shouldn't be surprised if that appointment setter, the scheduler, says, we could help you take care of that with a shared medical appointment. And one of the benefits, one of the pluses on the side of a shared medical appointment is the fact that you don't have to wait so long to get the medical attention that you're searching for. You serve more people. Mm -hmm. Sounds kind of efficient. It is. And like I said, I think that looking into the future, we do need to think outside the box. Our population is changing. Our needs are changing. Our technology is expanding. So utilizing all of these, I think, is a positive. Doing things the same way they've always been done serves a purpose to some degree, but thinking outside the box and coming up with new ideas to also assist is very important. We can do it better. I think that's what we're finding is that Mm -hmm. if we do open up our minds and try some different things. Mm -hmm. I know in the recent past, we have talked about SMA doing Mm e-visits, and we've talked about the NOW Clinic using your technology, things like your smartphone to interact with your doctor, using Mm -hmm. emails and corresponding back and forth Mm -hmm. and getting the answers and Mm -hmm. not having to go into the clinic to get the diagnosis Mm -hmm. and the medication for that urinary tract Mm -hmm. infection, for instance. For things that can be handled in that setting that are appropriate, yes. In fact, in my own practice for patients. I am one of the providers that my patients utilize e-visits quite a bit. In fact, one of the highest, mainly because we've been using that for a number of years now. And it is a very efficient way. We live in a city that we all have very different schedules. Something that is available online to utilize my patients that work different shifts can get messages to me at their convenience because it's there for them to be able to use. So these types of technologies we find are very helpful. And it spans across all age groups. The technology that we use is not only limited to our quote-unquote younger population that uses their smartphones and that we have across the board our seniors and our middle-aged patients feel just as comfortable utilizing this if they're already using computers. So it's across the board access for everyone. Medical appointments and the way that we interact with our medical providers, our doctors, Mm -hmm. it's changing. It is. But in a good way. In a good way. I think it's for the positive. I'm happy to be a part of something that is looking towards the future to expand and think outside the box. Not going to be a country doctor anytime soon where you're going to go out in your little pickup truck? No. (laughs) It's actually quite exciting. I think that the term shared medical appointments, you don't know exactly what that is Mm -hmm. until Mm -hmm. you get the full story, which is why we asked you to come see us today on Talking Solutions. And my patients and Southwest Medical patients also do have the ability to come in and be observers in one of
of these just to kind of see how it works. That's always an option. You may not want to be a participant as a first visit, but being able to see what it's all about is definitely something that can be explored. Dr. Papa George, every time we want to get an update on what's going on as far as medicine in Southern Nevada, we go to SMA and we get the best information. Yes. Shared medical appointments. That's what we've been talking about today. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you for having me.